Hi, I'm Rebecca Sachs. I'm a clinical psychologist at Spectrum Services. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the applicability of cognitive behavioral therapy for individuals on the autism spectrum. I'd like to share a thought that another psychologist, Dr. Valerie Gauss, who wrote the book Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Individuals with Asperger's Syndrome, has often shared with me. She let me know that if an individual has strep throat and they go to the doctor, the doctor would know to prescribe an antibiotic. Would the doctor prescribe anything differently because that individual had autism? Absolutely not. If we know that we have a first line treatment that works for most individuals, why wouldn't we think to apply to individuals with autism and let them have access to evidence-based care as well? What I'd like to argue is the applicability of cognitive behavioral therapy for people with autism just needs a few modifications than what we're used to in our day-to-day -day with other patients. One of the things that's really important for us to keep in mind is that individuals with autism often input, process, organize, and then output information a little bit differently. One big way that they do process information differently is they tend to be visual thinkers. They also tend to think dichotomously and often routine and change are difficult. These are easy things for psychologists to incorporate into therapy. One thing that we can do is always present a visual agenda. Let our patients know what to expect in the course of the next 45 minutes. Let's be sure to reinforce our patients after tasks. Use very, very concrete language, knowing the way that individuals with autism think and give very, very clear expectations. Expectations for skills that we're gonna be working on in session, skills that they're going to have to practice on their own during homework, and make sure that we're checking in for understanding. The other part of autism that we wanna be sure to address is difficulties with social communication. This usually highlights People have difficulty what we call perspective taking or theory of mind and understanding the unwritten social rules of what's going on. How I like to apply this when I'm doing cognitive behavioral therapy is to know I really want to stay away from sarcasm or other things and use more literal language. The other thing that I want to do is teach my patients on how to collect the most important social information. This may be impacting things like social anxiety and also may be impacting the, the way that they'll process a situation and how they'll execute a response. One of the things that I like to do is make sure I keep verbal or communicative routines in session. So my patients don't have to stretch themselves in ways that are unnecessary when I'm actually doing things like cognitive restructuring. The other thing that's often very helpful to let patients know is the use of social stories. This is basically a way to let patients know in a descriptive way what to expect, how others are thinking, and what's the way that's most appropriate to behave. This lets patients know both when you're doing perhaps exposure therapy or cognitive restructuring or talking about how they do emotional regulation outside of the session of different ways to behave. Last but not least, we know that individuals with autism often have difficulties with emotional regulation. Part of this may include some of the sensory sensitivities that they have that may make them feel more irritated or primed to feel anxious, fear, anger, annoyance. The most difficult thing for many patients is to even just be aware or identify their emotions. This will be something before you enter cognitive restructuring that you may want to focus on. Just being able to have your patients have an emotional vocabulary will be very, very helpful. So then you can understand the role of thoughts on behaviors and emotions. Last but not least, a suggestion that I would say is rather than the typical subjective units of distress or how we would rate other emotions from either one to 10 or one to 100, we know that individuals with autism tend to benefit when we make the scale a little slower. And one of the most often used scales within the world of autism is the five point scale. So teaching patients to rate their emotions and their physiological reactions that come along with those emotions is something that can help aid cognitive behavioral therapy. I hope you can use this information and know that there's plenty of research that shows about the applicability of cognitive behavioral therapy for individuals with autism. Thank you.